Don't know how to build a team from scratch or find good teammates? Dreamteam.gg, the ultimate team building platform. Get on fast track to advance from novice to amateur and, if desired, to professional gamer. Join dreamteam.gg today. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. If you guys can tell, I'm smiling very, very wide today because I just completed yesterday. If you guys did stop by, thank you very much. My 24-hour CSGO stream, yes, I did survive. My voice hurts a ton, so I can't shout too much today or get too loud, but I quickly want to thank all of you guys who did stop by, all the generous donations. Of course, all of you guys who gave me skins to give away. It was an amazing time, such a success as well, and a very, very fun time. It made my day, it made my weekend so much better. So thank you to all of you guys who did stop by. Please leave a comment down below if you guys did, and I'll try and reply to all of you down below. So let's hop into our first story though. A lot did happen during that 24 hour stream in terms of news and of course the past 48 hours. If you guys did hear about this, I know a lot of you already told me about it. I'm going to tell you my thoughts and opinions about the new G2 roster which will include ex-Optic member Mixwell and a big shift of things here. No one really saw this coming, although of course we had Mixwell hint at us at Twitter several times that he was going to be learning French. No one really thought he would be joining G2 this soon and will be in place of one of their better members and that will be Shocks. Now Shocks we moved to the bench for the time being, although until we actually have Mixwell playing in the WESG tournament. We'll talk about more stories about WESG very shortly here. WESG coming out this weekend, guys, starting March 13th. That's a $1.5 million prize pool. We do have Mixwell participating in that for a Spanish team. That Spanish team is Wololos. He'll be on that roster for those matches. Once those matches do conclude, he'll be joining as a trial member to G2 in place of Shocks. Shocks will move to the bench along with their coach, Smiths. They'll be both as the bench players. Apparently, though, in the future, Smiths also wants to go back to pro playing. On top of that, though, I want you guys to clarify and clarify with all of you. This is a very, very kind of a weird news story because according to the team in NBK, this is actually Shox's idea. It's his own idea. No matter if he had actually had the hand injury or not, if he had surgery or not, he would have been moved to the bench because he did not want to play with NBK as the IGL. With this newer transition and Mixwell joining the team, NBK will try and take the IGL role. Mixwell will join in. Shox will go to the bench and apparently during Shox's surgery, of course, he will have that surgery coming up here very shortly as well. That could be a month or two in terms of recovery time. Who knows when he'll actually back to full form. When he does return though, it likely will not be to this G2 roster and Mixwell will mostly go from a trial member to a full-time member. So yes, it does say trial Mixwell, but we all know very fair and square guys. Mixwell is a very good player and this G2 roster could probably certainly use him to the best of their ability and he most likely will join the team as a full-time member. And yes, Shox will no longer be a part of G2. He'll be replaced by Mixwell and this would have happened no matter what. Shox did clarify no matter if he had this injury or not, this would have been the team decision to make. The team did agree to keep MBK as the IG and Shocks will be benched for the time being along with Smiths. They will be playing again guys but to clarify it may not be for G2 and that was a huge roster change news and this could also mean we're going to see Shocks in a brand new role. He did obviously say he does not want to be a captain of whatever team he comes back for so we could see a brand new uh, shift of, his, of roles here especially if he does come back very healthy from his transition for his surgery with the cysts in his wrist if he does come back healthy guys returns to form and no longer has the burden of being IGL we could see a brand new Shocks come back to whatever team he does play for and I bouncing off that I do want to talk about WSG one more time the $1.5 million tournament coming with some controversies and drama this upcoming weekend. Uh, you guys could probably argue with the 32 teams there, only probably about six or five or six of them actually have a good chance at winning that event. The rest of them are probably tier two, tier three teams or lower. And Team Ukraine was actually one of the teams projected to win the event alongside SK, Cloud9, Fnatic, maybe Space Soldiers, other teams out there. One of the five or six teams who actually have a chance to win this event was Team Ukraine with Flamey, Simple, Zeus, Seize, Bondic on that roster. A very solid Ukrainian roster, although until yesterday, the team did withdraw their spot from WESG. Now this is very controversial because this is the largest CSGO event these teams are invited to every single year. $1.5 million, $800,000 going to first place, 300 k to second place, 150 k to third place, and yes, Ukrainian teams uh, like this one have a great chance of coming away with at least probably $50,000 in prize pool money, if not the grand prize of $800,000. So it's kind of weird to see a team drop out like this, and again, people are on both sides of the fence right now. Some people are saying that apparently it's simple and flamey, who did not want to get on their flights, did not want to go to the event because they actually lost to Godsent in an ECS match. I'll talk about that in a second here. Other people saying though, of course the team could have gone without those players. They could have actually uh, they could have actually fielded anyone in that roster to replace those two guys. Uh, but again, a lot of controversy going on. It was actually first Simple making his post. Apparently Simple, according to his health, his nervous issues, of course, the kind of stress, the, the pressure and stress he's been under these past few months, I can imagine it's immense. That, guy, that kind of, you know, having to carry this team every through every single event. 
not coming with any big results either. He said with his health issues, he was not going to go to the event. The team could still go without him. It did seem, though, bouncing off that, that Flamey, once Simple made his post, he had no motivation to go either without Simple. This would make sense, though, because Simple being that kind of carry character, without him on the roster, they probably had a much less of a chance of coming with any money here. So Flamey then posted this, guys. He, he said, actually, as well, uh, it would be kind of pointless for the team to actually compete the way he's in his current mind state. People saying their current mind state was, of course, their loss to Godsent. If you guys missed that matchup, it was actually an ESCA uh, Challenger Cup series. And the winner of that series actually came away with the very last spot for ECS Season 5. Of course, it's a very big spot to give away. And they did lose that spot to Godsent, the very young roster led by their two youngest players. That's actually going to be 19-year-old Hampus, 15-year-old Brawlin, leading that Godsent roster to beat Na'Vi in a best-of-three matchup. And decidedly so, two very good uh, actual map wins there for Godsent. They take that last ECS spot. And apparently, that's where Simple and Flamey tilted. And shortly afterwards, guys, that's where they withdrew uh, their idea or maybe actually decided not to board their flight to go to WSG and they told their team they're not going to be going. Now I do feel bad for other players here like Seized who took to social media posting things about them along with that Bondic. I always feel bad for Bondic. He's been bouncing around to Ty Lu and back to HR and oh, you know a bunch of teams out there so I feel bad for this guy. He had a great chance to win a lot of money here and all of a sudden your roster does not want to go because they maybe lost a deciding matchup here or there and all of a sudden you lose your two, two of your better players and you can't field the roster. Now I do want to say as well apparently though they could have fielded any CIS members. They could have fielded any Russian players to join that uh, Ukrainian team, which does kind of sound confusing, but trust me, guys, it does work out. We also had, of course, Flamey tweet out some things. He said he would have paid for any other players' flights if they wanted to fill in for the team, if the organization did not pay for them, as long as he could not go. So Flamey pretty much saying, hey, guys, I'm not going to go. If the organization does not want to pay for your flights for a new player to go, I'll pay for your flights. Kind of making up for his for his uh, lack of wanting to go. He would pay for the other players to go instead. But instead, by the very end of the day, guys, Guys, with Simple and Flamey not boarding their flights. C's kind of left hanging at the airport, apparently waiting for Flamey. We do have the team deciding to withdraw from WESG and losing out a chance, a chance to make $800,000, if not 300K, if not 150K. Those are your first, second, and third place prizes. They certainly would have came away with some kind of prize pool money here, guys. I do feel bad for the players who are willing to pay here, but apparently this, the pressure and the stress has gotten to Simple and other players of that Navi roster, and they're taking a break from a big event here. And also in some very big drama this past weekend, we actually had a Mad City LAN event. We also had a physical altercation, a fight breakout at a CSGO LAN event known as Mad City. I'll link their Twitter down below if you guys want to check out their Twitter and see their events. They host a lot of events throughout the U.S. On top of that, we also had Whitmer's team, a Whitmer's team known as X1, X1 Mob that is. If you guys remember though, Whitmer had that last post a few months, about a month and a half ago about retiring from CSGO. He's having fun with it though. He's not playing professionally. He's having fun also doing some drinking before matches and managing to win those matches. So it's great to see he's actually having really good fun playing CSGO at some local LAN events. His team doing quite well, making it decently far in the event. One of his uh, teammates, though, allegedly SFX, got into a physical altercation after a matchup with a team known as Rival, that team Rival, and one of their members known as P-Trip on screen for all of you. Uh, key note here, guys, P-Trip's actually 17 years old, so when you bring up any fights, any physical altercations, if you do get into a fight with a minor, and you're not a minor, this could bring up some big issues. So apparently, though, it was actually Whitmer's teammate. After the match, SFX got into a physical altercation with P-Trip. I'll show their pictures one more time for all of you guys. Uh, we have SFX, 28 years old, and we have P-Trip, 17 year olds, 17 years old, a minor, got into a physical altercation. The cops were called. Eventually, SFX was actually uh, booked away or actually handcuffed by the by the cops. There's actually a video out there. I'll link down below for all of you. He's actually put in the cop car as well. No one's actually sure right now. I uh, know no details or updates if he's actually been charged by P Trip. Allegedly, though, according to the source on the Twitter, I'll link down below as well. It was actually P Trip who actually hurt his shoulder taking down FS SFX, the 11 year old older man. So yes, guys, a key note here. Uh, if you, if you do realize the person you're fighting is a minor and you're not a minor you're gonna have you're gonna run some big issues even though either way though guys if you meet for the same age don't get into fights at land events don't get to fights in public you know what just don't get into fights at all okay it's not, not a good idea although both teams at first were disqualified guys they did change their their actual rules both teams had to find replacements for the two players that being p-trip and sfx who actually got into the physical altercation it actually was team rival who eventually went on to win a few more matches whitmer's team did fall short their next match though with their sub in so yes good uh, good on mad city to change those rules not to disqualify these teams actually just ban those two players who got 
fit into a physical fight there. And uh, we'll, we'll wait for updates on the, on the scene, guys. And hopefully this guy's not charged for this. You hate to see a CSGO, uh, a CSGO player like this get charged uh, for some you know criminal charges just for getting into a physical altercation. It didn't hopefully seem too serious, but again, we don't know the full details right now. A 28-year-old man got taken down by 17-year-olds. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, I will see you in a couple days, guys. My voice, I, I can't, you probably can't tell right now, my voice is hurting so bad to talk. So I'm going to make this my last story. I'll say some other stories for next episode. And thank you again for all watching. We do have more hints out there towards the SK Gaming and, of course, the Immortal Shift there. We do have projections out there saying SK Gaming's current roster will leave for Team Immortals, owned by Noah Winston, and the X Hunter Thieves roster will then join SK Gaming. More hints at that if you guys saw the, the Immortals official Twitter did tweet out this. It's a pretty much a direct hint right now, guys, that yes, they will be acquiring a new Brazilian roster. Who that roster will most likely be is the current SK Gaming roster sometime in July is when it's expected to happen. Of course, none of this is actually confirmed right now. It's very curious, though, why Immortals would actually tweet this out. They made it quite obvious, but it does seem SK Gaming's roster will go to Immortals, and then we have X Hunter Thieves who will join SK Gaming. We'll see if it actually happens, though, guys. We have so many hints out there, so much proof out there. It's not 100% confirmed, but it's nearly confirmed. So again, one last time, thank you all for watching today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did stop by with the 24-hour stream, thank you even more. It was seriously so much fun. I can't thank you guys enough. Hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake Morale Q. I will see you all next time. Goodbye, guys.